hello everyone so in this video lecture i am going to discuss the distributed arithmetic for max circuit that is multiply and accumulate circuit okay so the multiply and accumulate that is also known as mac mac operation is a very common operation in digital signal processing and the direct implementation of the mac operations requires the dedicated multipliers okay so uh, by now you must have realized that the multiplier add up to the area and the time okay so it is very important to reduce the number of multipliers in our circuit so the distributed arithmetic replaces the multiplication by rom lookups okay so this is a one of the technique by which we can replace the multipliers by the rom lookups that we will see later okay so area savings expected is up to 80% in the dsp hardware if you use da and da can be implemented in fpgas so because we are using rom lookups so it means that we are storing some information in the memory part that we can access by providing the proper address so da can be implemented in fpgas so the memory of the fpga can be used to implement the mac operation so we can use fpga to implement the mac operations that are involved in the dsp so da was proposed long ago that was by pellet and liu that was in 1974 and what is the basic concept of da in da the multiplications are reordered and mixed such that arithmetic becomes distributed through the structure and da is commonly used for implementation of convolution operations okay and discrete cosine transform that are mainly used for video compressions okay so starting with a basic mac operation that is a multiply and accumulate operation that is represented by the equation y is equal to a1x1 plus a2x2 till e of k and x of k so we okay so this can be written in this form that is summation k equal to 1 to capital k e of k and x of k so just for example so a consists of four numbers that is 32 42 45 and 23 and x also consists of four number that is 42 20 minus 22 and 67 this means that k is equal to 4 so y will be equal to 32 into 42 plus 42 into 20 plus 45 into minus 22 plus 23 into 67 okay and the result is 2096 so if we want to implement this operation in a traditional way okay so that will require 1 2 3 three adder and four multiplier okay so four multiplication and three add operations are required to implement this and this is the example of multiply and multiply add multiply add multiply add okay so we can perform this like this so this multiplier will multiply 32 and 42 okay and then it will be added to the result of 42 and 20 like then 78 and 22 and likewise okay so four multipliers and three adders are required so our aim is to eliminate this multipliers okay this will add up to area and time okay and this can be done by distributed arithmetic technique so starting with the formulation of da okay so consider the same equation y is equal to summation k equal to 1 to capital k this is small k this is capital k e of k x of k so where xk be an 
n bit scaled two's complement number that is mod of xk is less than one and xk is represented by n number of bits bk0 bk1 bk2 up to bk n minus one and this is the sign bit so this can be represented in this form xk is minus bk0 plus summation n equal to one to n minus one b of k n 2 raised to power minus 1 something like this it can be something like this 0 0.1101 okay something like this 0 0.1101 so this is least significant bit this is most significant bit and this will be sign bit okay so the weight of the least significant bit for this case will be 2 raised to power minus 4 and the most significant bit will be 2 raised to power minus 1 so that's why this factor 2 raised to power minus n this is the sign bit so xk will be represented something like this okay now substituting xk that is equation 2 in equation 1 so putting xk so substituting xk by this value so we have y is equal to summation small k is equal to 1 to capital k e of k in bracket minus b of k 0 plus summation n equal to 1 to capital N minus 1 B of K N 2 raised to power minus N okay now multiplying this external term into the bracket this gives summation small k equal to 1 to capital K with minus sign B K of 0 dot A K plus summation K equal to 1 to capital K and summation n equal to 1 to capital N minus 1 e of k b of k n 2 raised to power minus n okay so we have this equation with us let's say this is equation 3 so now we will expand this part Okay, so this term as it is summation small k equal to 1 to capital K B of K 0 dot A K as it is and this summation outside bracket as it is small k equal to 1 to capital K now we are expanding this means we are putting n equal to 1 2 till capital N minus 1 so this becomes A of K B of K 1 2 is to power minus 1 plus A of K B of K 2 2 raised to power minus 2 till e of k b of k capital n minus 1 2 raised to power minus capital n minus 1 okay now we can expand this term also so that becomes y is equal to minus b of 1 0 okay now we are substituting k equal to 1 to k in this term so for k equal to 1 it is b of 1 0 e1 plus b of 2 0 dot a 2 dot 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 b of k this is now capital K so capital K 0 dot a k okay so this is the first term and this and the second term is further expanded by putting the values of k so for k equal to 1 it become b 1 1 dot a 1 2 raised to power minus 1 plus b12 dot a1 2 raised to power minus 2 okay b1 bracket capital n minus 1 dot a1 multiplied by 2 raised to power minus bracket n minus 1 bracket close okay so this is for k equal to 1 
now we will substitute k equal to 2 and this will be the term d of 2 1 dot a 2 multiplied by 2 raised to the power minus 1 d of 2 2 dot a 2 2 raised to the power minus 2 till d of 2 multiplied by d of 2 capital n minus 1 e of 2 multiplied by 2 of minus bracket n minus 1 okay so this is for k equal to 2 and we will keep on putting the values of k and for small k equal to capital k at last we will have d of capital k1 dot e of k multiplied by 2 is to a minus 1 d of capital k2 dot e of k 2 is to a minus 2 till e of capital k n minus 1 e of k 2 is to power minus n minus 1 okay so so now what I will do, I, I am going to rearrange the equation. So first term add as it is. And uh, now I will group the terms with similar power of 2. For example, this is having 2 raised to a minus 1, b11 a1. This term b21 a2, 2 raised to power minus 1, till bk1 a of k, 2 raised to power minus 1. Okay, so I have grouped the term which is having the common term 2 raised to the power minus 1. Similarly, grouping the terms which is having the power factor 2 raised to the power minus 2 and in the n minus 1 term I can group and the last term that will have a power 2 raised to the power minus n minus 1. So I can group this. Okay. So taking the common term out, so this first term as it is, taking 2 raised to the power minus 1 common, I have b11 a1 plus b21 a2 plus b31 a3 up to b capital K of 1 a of k. Taking the term 2 raised to the power minus 2 out, I have b12 a1 plus b22 a2 plus b32 a3 up to bk2 dot ak 2 raised to the power minus 2 plus at last taking the term 2 is for minus bracket n minus 1 b1 n minus 1 dot a1 b2 n minus 2 dot a2 up to b of k n minus 1 dot a k okay so this is the rearranged equation so I can write it as y that is equal to minus summation k equal to 1 to capital K b of k 0 dot a k no change in this this can be written as summation n equal to 1 to capital n minus 1 b1 n dot a1 b2 n dot a2 up to b of k n dot a k 2 raised to power minus n and further this term inside the bracket can be written as summation k equal to 1 to capital K a of k dot b of k n 2 is to a minus 1. Okay, so you can notice that this equation 3, this the summations are interchanged, remaining all things are same. the summation is interchanged okay so now this term summation k equal to small k equal to 1 to capital k a of k b of k n this can have 2k possible values okay a and k is a of k is are constant so a1 a2 a3 up to a k these are constant bk b of kn that can have two values either one or zero okay so we have something like this a1 b1 n plus a2 b2 n plus something like this 
E of capital Q, B of capital Q, L. So from one to K. Okay. So it can have two K possible values. Each of B of each of B K can have two values, either one or zero. Similarly, this term A of K, B of K zero, it can also have two of K possible values. Okay, suppose all are zero. So we have a one. We have zero. If all are zero, if all are one, so we will have a one plus a two plus a three up to a of k. Okay, so this is for all b zero. This is for all b. Of k that is one. Okay. So now the values are represented in terms of a keys that are constant. So it means that we have two k values that can be represented in terms of this constants. and this can be saved in a rom of size 2k so if all bk's are zero the value will be zero if all bk's are one the value will be a1 plus a2 plus a3 up to ak if for different values different combinations of ak okay so this is fixed this is not going to change so we can store this 2k different values in a rom of size 2k so total number of address line required to access this number of values will be k okay so k k bit k address line will be required to access this number of cells so b1 and 2 b of a n so total address lines Okay, so now let's say that k is four, and the coefficients are a one that is equal to point seven two, a two that is equal to minus point three, a three is equal to zero point nine five, and a four is equal to point one one. Okay, so my equation is this: y is equal to summation small n is equal to one to capital n minus one inside. Small k equal to one to four e of k b of k and two raised to the power minus n plus summation k equal to one to four e of k minus b of k zero. Okay, so for k equal to four, rom side required will be two raised to the power k. Two raised to the power four that is sixteen word rom. Okay, and the address line will be. And the address line will be this values b of one n, b of two n, up to b of k n. These will be the address lines. So b of one n, b of two n, b of three n, b of four n. Four different bits can have sixteen possible values, starting from zero 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 to one 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 one. Okay. So if all are zero, means for this, if all are zero, the content will be zero. Okay, and for the remaining values, we have to expand this. That is for k equal to one to four, b of k, b of k n is equal to a one into b one n, a two dot b two n plus a three dot b three n plus a four dot b four n. So for zero 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 one, b one n is zero, b two n is zero, b three n is zero, b four n is one. So the result is a four, and a four is point one one. For zero zero one zero, 
zero zero one zero. This is one. So a three. Okay. So likewise, that depends on the value of b k n. For the last one 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 one, so we have a one plus a two plus a three plus a four. That is one point four eight. Okay. So this information can be stored in a ROM of size two is power four. and the address line that is four address line can be connected to b1 and b2 and b3 and and b4 so depending and on the values the content can be accessed so no multiplication is required so now again coming back to this so now we have to derive the hardware to implement this equation okay so uh the equation 4 that was derived from this equation okay so first term is minus of b10 a1 plus b20 a2 up to bk0 ak the second term is b11 a1 plus b21 a2 okay and likewise so we have to basically implement this equation so let's take some value of k and n so let's take k equal to 3 and n equal to three. Okay, so I am taking k equal to three and n equal to three, and this is the hardware. So with the help of this example, I am going to explain the operation of this hardware path. So basically, the multiplication that we need to perform is a one x one plus a two x two plus a three x three. Okay, and x is n bit number. Okay. Scaled n bit number represented in the two's complement form. So the DA formulation for this multiplication will be y equal to minus b one zero a one plus b two zero a two plus b three zero a three plus in bracket b one one a one plus b two one a two plus b three one a three whole multiplied by two is to power minus one plus b one two a one plus b two two a two plus b three two a three. That multiplied by two is to the minus two. Okay, so this is the ROM that will store the two K values. Okay, so for k equal to three, two is to the three is eight. Eight values. Okay. Okay, so from here you can see that each term is having three variables okay a1 a2 a3 are constant a1 a2 and a3 are some constant we know their values but we know we don't know the values of this x that is encoded in the form of bit b1 b2 and b3 that can be 0 and 1 so this can have eight possible values this can also have eight possible values so this can also have eight possible values okay so this is the lsb term that corresponds to 2 raised to the minus 2 this term corresponds to lsb and this term corresponds to sine bit okay and this can be considered as most significant bit msb Okay, so x is encoded into three bits, something like this, a dot b into c. So this is LSB, this is MSB, this is sine bit. This is having a weight of two raised to the minus two. This is having weight of two raised to the minus one, and this is sine bit. So we are representing in two's complement form. That's why we have applied minus sign at this point. Okay, so first, the bit corresponds to LSB will come. That is B one two, B two two, and B three two. So first, B one two, B two two, B three two will come. And based on their values, there can be eight 
okay so based on their value there are eight possible solutions starting from 0 0 0 to a1 plus a2 plus a3 so depending on the values of b12 b22 b32 okay we will give this to the rom and one values will be fetched okay so the first value will be displayed at its output and s will be zero initially the s will be zero so this is a multiplexer two cross one multiplexer so the the data will pass from this point okay so this result will be provided to the adder and that will be added to the previously calculated result so previous to this there was no calculation so initially this will be passed as it is and it will be stored in the delay element okay now after this the values b11 b21 and b31 this will be provided to the address lines of row okay so we are calculating this value and the previously calculated value will be given again back to the second input of this accumulator so this two terms we are adding this two terms okay so this shift right register will basically multiply 2 is to power 1 to this term okay so this term is just generated this term is shifted right by 1 so it is multiplied by 2 raised to power minus 1 okay so this accumulator will add the 2 result and that will be stored again in the delay element okay now this term the last term for this the values b10 b20 and b30 will be provided to the address lines of row okay so now this the result of this will be added to the result of this two value okay so we have already added this two terms now the result of this will be added to the first okay, the sign bit since this is a sign bit so a minus sign so we have to put a minus sign means we have to negate this so for this we have put a not gate and the output of the not gate is provided to the first input of the multiplexer okay so during this the sign bit will be equal to 1 okay so this will be equal to 1 when sign bit arrives okay so this value will be added to the result of the previously calculated value so again this will be feedback it will be shifted right and it the result will be provided to the input of the adder so during this during the first shift 2 raised to power minus 1 was already multiplied to this and no factor was multiplied to this term okay so now during the calculation of this term that is the sine bit term this will be again provided to the shift register so further 2 raised to power minus 1 will be multiplied so this term will be multiplied by 2 raised to power minus 1 and this term will be multiplied by again 2 raised to power minus 1 so the overall factor will be 2 raised to power minus 2 because this term has been rotated twice okay so so now the adder will generate the final result and we can sample the output from this point y so this adder is a bit parallel carry propagate adder that adds the rom content to the previously accumulated result so here you can see that without using any external multiplier we have performed the multiplication a1 x1 plus a2 x2 plus a3 x so no external multiplier was involved just by using the rom 
and saving the proper values we say that we have used the ROM lookup tables we have performed the multiplication MAC operation